So spammer is our project, but for today we have something way simpler called emoji server. So what is emoji server? You will build an express server which responds to requests per the following API documentation. Um, and we are, I already have a built out server that you can use. So if I click on this, probably went to sleep again because it's on render. Um, let's take a look at the docs. So uh, this is what you're gonna actually build today. You don't care about the front end at all. It might be different clients from around the world. It, it just doesn't matter to you at all. People are gonna request things from your server and you're gonna provide them in this format. So if they send a get request to slash emojis, you're gonna respond like this with your server. And if they send a get request for a single emoji, you're going to respond like this. Let's actually go through and do these requests. I think will be useful. So how can I send this first request to get these emojis from this, um, from the API I already built? You're going to build one today, but I already, I already built this one. Um, Hara, how can I send this get request? Sorry, um, uh, export default or. Oh, I, I want to do it just from the browser. So I'm just going to paste in that link and the path. Oh, slash. Yeah. Slash emojis. I guess. Slash emojis. Let me. Duh. Sorry, I couldn't. Yeah. Um, so slash emojis. Exactly. And then here. We see the response. What data type did we get back, um, David? Uh, it looks like an array of objects. What is it, the JSON? Yeah, we actually got back JSON, but okay. the properties we care about, success emojis, and this array of objects. Uh, so the browser can only do which category of requests. Which category of our HTTP requests can the brow can only the browser do? Uh, Monica. Um, is it get? Yeah, it can only do get. So we're going to use another tool to emulate some of these requests, and that tool is Thunder Client. But how can I do this same request using Thunder Client? What do I type in here, Monica? Um, you would copy the link or exactly how does there? Yeah, exactly. So I send this in Thunder Client and I get the same exact response. Um, that's great. Today you're going to rely on Thunder Client a lot because Thunder Client is basically faking that you have a front end, a client that's sending you different requests to the back end. So what else do we have to do? Uh, we have to do this get request, but then we also have to do a get request for a single emoji. So how can I do a get request to just um, ask for the emoji with ID two here? Uh, Alex, how do I have to change this path in Thunder Client? Uh, you're just gonna do uh, slash and semicolon emoji, the name, why? No, so the request will actually just be the number. This is what it'll look like in your code today, but uh, for right here, it, it'll just be the like the number two. So we send that request, we get back JSON. The same format every time, which is very important because your front end wants that consistency, right? To know what to expect from you. So there's the response for a get. Now we have something way more interesting. We have a make a new emoji. So how can I do, how can I emulate a client sending our backend this request in Thunder Client? Uh, Guillaume, what do I have to do to emulate this request? Um, 
You can change uh, the meta to yeah. post. You change this to post. Yeah, and then uh, delete the number two. Yeah. On on yeah. And what else do we have to do? Mm, and then uh, we need to send the bodies. Um, yeah, uh, includes. Yeah, a name and character. Yeah, but we have to make this JSON. Yeah. There we go. Um, I thought there was a format button. I guess not. I'm pretty sure there is. Anyway, so we send this request and we see that we got a response. Here's the thing. Your client is going to screw up in every conceivable way in every request they send you. It's just, it's guaranteed, right? So what's some way they could screw up this request, your client? What do you think, Zach? How could they possibly screw up this request, our client? Um, using the wrong method? Yeah, absolutely. So they do, a, a, I don't know, they do a, a put when they meant to create a new. And our server is smart enough to say there was no route found. So the server didn't know what you meant by doing a put request to emojis. Yeah, that's a good one. What's another way they can screw up, um, Rodrigo? Uh, maybe not using the JSON. Yeah. So they they forget that they have to use JSON. What happens then? They send this request, and our error message is not great, but it's the best we can do. Um you see something that it's unexpected in JSON. So that should remind you that your body of the request is probably screwed up. Yeah. How else can they screw up, um, Ryan? They can forget to put in one of the fields altogether. Yeah, they don't give us something we need. They don't give us character and we required it. And here the message is pretty good. Not to blow my own horn, but it's a pretty good message, right? You must provide a name and character. I guess I should have said when creating an emoji. Um, but still, pretty good. So I really care about this uh, error handling. It, it's, I don't, it's not even really error handling. It's just it's absolutely going to occur that they screw up their request. And I want your server to send back the best possible response. So when you make an endpoint, which you will today, and you get it working, think of all the ways you can break it and make sure you're sending a response that, that looks great, like this right here. Questions on that? I, I really care about this part, and it's something students <laughs> generally don't like to focus on. Can anyone think of another way they can screw up? I think we maybe hit everything. Oh, there's one major way they can screw up involving up here. Can anyone think? Not having the right endpoint. Yeah. So they do, I don't know, make emoji, right? What do you think our server should, what, what, what would be the best thing our server could say in this situation? Just a 404, I guess, error. That so a 404 wrong. is a status code. Which we haven't okay. talked about really. Okay. Yeah. So we we so okay. So another point, we can send back HTML, text, XML, but we always want to send back JSON for that consistency. Um, so we're going to always send back JSON. You don't have to really think about that. It's always going to be JSON. But the JSON we're going to send them back is what can anyone. What's the pattern? It's going to be the same pattern that it's been for everything else. Can anyone guess? So just uh, some JSON with success, false, error, no route found, right? It can be pretty simple, but yeah. 
Questions on that? All right. Um, how can we do this delete request? Uh, Christmas is over. We don't want Santa anymore. How can we delete them? Uh, Sarthak? You there? Yeah. Yeah, I can't hear you. Uh, we'll we'll circle back. Uh, Victor, how can I do this delete request from Thunder Client? Uh, I don't know. Sorry, I don't. Oh, no worries. Right uh, Daniel. Any help? How can I delete? How can I delete Santa? I mean, um, we would. If I am um, reading this correctly, you need to do the uh, emojis dash the ID of the emoji that you want to delete. Yeah. So let's. Uh, I don't. Well, let's say we forgot what Santa is. What's a way we can find out again? A uh, get. Yeah. Do a get request. Look at all our emojis. Mm -hmm. Santa would be the last. So, okay. how can I delete Santa? So, uh, go back to your delete, um, and then uh, forward slash thirty one. Yep. And then we get a nice JSON response here. <clears throat> so, every response, I don't think without exception is JSON and it has a property called success. So that's a good place to start, right? Um, okay, finally our hardest one. How can we update Santa? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no updating here, but let's just assume. How can we update Santa? Uh, Kimberly? I don't know. I would assume you would have to go over to where it says delete and put a put over there. Very nice. Yeah. And then make whatever you have to do. And then. Yeah. Now we're actually good. Uh, I don't know. Should we just change it to like a Christmas emoji? I have a question. Um, you, we're still working on Santa here, but in the previous, this Thunderbird, like because we sent a delete request with Thunderbird, uh, is that actually gonna update the, or is that gonna actually delete the Santa from the um, the database? The database, or because because in this case, if we run this to update Santa, does it even exist anymore? No. Yeah, we're doing real requests to our backend. Today it's gonna be a fake database because mm -hmm. tomorrow we'll get into real databases, but. Yeah, these are real requests. Thunder Client's whole purpose is it would be so much work to create a whole front end just to test our back end. We're a back end developer. We don't care about the front end. So we can do these requests to emulate what the front end developer is going to do when they're building their app. What you Just what you did with Spammer, right? So we're sending this update for Santa. It's a miss. Clause. I got an error. No emoji found with that ID. No, that's what I meant because we just deleted it in the previous. Yeah, so we'll update some random person. Who cares? And there we go. That was actually another error we got, though. That was another example of a, a, a good error that provided your front end developer with uh, good information. Questions on all those requests, and that's it. That's what you're gonna do. That's what you're gonna do today. That's what you're gonna. Well, you're gonna build the server that does this work today. This was really just a tour of <laughs> what you have to do today, not anything about how to do that yet. So then the question is, well, how do we build a server, right? 
because we need to build this this emoji server that does all the things we just said we want it to do. So how do we do that? Let's say our first objective. Um, you see how this their server, or sorry, my server, when we send a get request to slash, it just says success false, no route found. Let's just do that. How, how can we just get that off the ground? How can we get started building a server? What'd you learn from pre-work? Yeah, Ronald? Um, I think we need to create like, Wait, how are we going to do it just regular? Like, we need, like, an HTTP module or something. Oh, no, we're using Express. Yeah, that's... Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that'd we're be, gonna need to that'd be way that. too hard, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're going to need to import, like, a, an Express uh, framework. Yeah, um, we're going to use Express, uh, and Express is a node package. So what do we have to do first? Uh, are we using, like, CommonJS or...? No, we're going to use modules. Okay, so then I think we're gonna have to use like the require. Well, no, that, um, that's that's common JS. But before we even do that, oh, okay. we want to use code and download it from someone else. Right, right, right. Okay. So what's we our pre? To, uh, we need to initialize this folder to be a Node JS project. Yeah, awesome. How do we do that? Um, Renata, how do we initialize a node project? Oh, is it init? It is, yeah. NPM init. NPM init. And then dash y so they don't dash ask us y. a million questions we don't care about. And that creates us the one file to rule them all, package.json. Um, and then that's it. We have a node project. So we want to use Express to build our server, right? So this example is actually not going to be that useful for us because we're going to use um, modules. I wonder if there's an Express example with modules. Isn't it like almost the same? Just, just yeah, part. but <laughs> Express with uh, someone has a hot mic if you can check too oh sorry Thok. i think that's you um yeah we'll do we'll just use uh the hello world and have to change it for us you'll 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 see some of the old uh i mean it's not old it's still being used but anyway how can i get this express so our objective, right, is to just get a server running that anyone can send a request to. And we want to send back a JSON that says success, false, no route found. When our user sends a get request to slash, uh, we want to send success, false, error, no route found. Or you know what? Let's let's change that. Let's do uh, when they send a get request to just our our slash our our route our our root route. Let's just say uh, welcome to the emoji server. Yeah, that's more friendly, right? Um, so that's our objective. How can we get started? I mean, we've gotten started, but how can we continue on? Uh, Ketzerin, any ideas? I uh, don't have any idea. I think uh, we have to be like decree express. Yeah, we're going to import express, express from express, yeah. but we don't have express yet because I have to do what? You have to... Uh, install yeah so i'm going to install express and that downloads the node modules package and it shows up in my package.json dependencies um and now i can kind of follow this tutorial i can invoke this express function 
And then I can just, I'll make my life easy, right? I'll just copy their example code and save it. Port I don't have defined, but I can define it. Commonly, we'll just say 3,000 for port. Um, and then let's try to run this, see what happens, see what how it yells at us, right? Uh, how can I run? So this is a JavaScript, but I'm not using a browser anymore. How can I run this code? Uh, Jazz? Um, was it node uh, app? What did we call our file? Oh, no. Index.js. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So I got an error. We'll check that out. Ooh, okay, this is a good one. Import express from express cannot use import statements outside a module. How do I have to modify my package.json to let node know I want to use the fancy new imports? You have to export it? Uh, not in this step, no. We did this a few lectures ago, two lectures ago. Um, I actually forget, totally, I'm blanking on the name. Does anyone remember? Is it import? No. Uh, oh, it says right here, module. And then we have two options, right? Set type module. Hi. Oh, am I still screwing this up? Type. Oh, there we go. Type module. Yeah. So it tells you right here. I don't know how I screwed that up. It literally says it. But anyway, that's how we let Node know we want to use uh, like the most modern import statements. So how do I run this again? Ronald, how do I run this again? Um. I think we can now type node space and then the file name. Yeah, but this gets annoying to have the, to rewrite every yeah. time. So what tool can I use? No uh, demand. We, yeah, we use yep. demand. Okay, no errors. I have a question. Yeah, go I have ahead. Question. Um. Uh, like if if the file like is a .js file. Do we need, can we omit like the .js? And you, if you just do index or I'm not sure. I'm just not in Node, but in, uh, okay. if, if your code's running in the browser, you can, which is confusing. Yeah. Okay. It's weird. It's interesting. The creator of that said it was a mistake. I think it's Douglas Croc Crockard. He said that that feature was a mistake of omitting the name. They should have been consistent with it though, once they made the mistake. Now it's just weird that there's both. Um, anyway, it says our app is listening on port 3000. I have so, a quick question. Yeah. Um, since you're uh, doing the import on line eight, is that why const express equals required is not being used? Exactly. I just noticed on, uh... This is the okay. old format. Okay. Or I guess I should, should stop saying old. This is the common JS, and we're using modules. Yep. You really will have to learn both, though. Um, okay, so I have a server that's listening and can re receive requests from anyone in the world with just those lines of code. So how do I test that? How do I test that my server will respond? to a request. How do I send it a request? Is this where you start using Thunder Client? Yeah, we can. How could I send using Thunder Client? How could I send it a request? When we run a server on our local computer before it's deployed, how do we tell Thunder Client or the browser to just look at our local computer? Is it that um, port or URL that it gives you? Yeah. In the terminal. 
So it's going to be localhost is the keyword. And this, the computer knows that that means you're sending a request to yourself. And the port we decided was 3000. And then we just set our, our, our root route, right? Slash. And it's saying, hello world. Unfortunately, what data type is this? What data type is it is a this? string? Yeah. A string? And we're making JSON servers only. So how can I fulfill my objective by modifying what we send? Um, Hara? I'm not sure on this one. Uh, David? What can I put as an argument to res.send? Which we'll go back and talk about, obviously. I'm not sure either. Um, any opens the class? Any guesses? This is my objective, yeah, right? This object right here. Is it the parse and or no? That would, no, I don't think so. That's for number. No, I can literally just paste this in to here. And now when I send the Not same. JSON. I don't have to use JSON. It'll, it's smart enough to, to know it's JSON. But you could use JSON too. That's fine. Um, anyway, I send the same request now. And I'm, I'm in JSON land, way more comfortable than that string. And it says, welcome to the emoji server. So we have, a with those few lines of code, we have this running um, server that anyone in the world can hit, right? Which is pretty crazy. The question's there, though. And then we'll break down what's going on. The, the port number, uh, how do you select amongst them? You know, is it just any port or is there a range of numbers or what do you choose there exactly? So I think when you deploy this to render, it will, you, it will override whatever you put and use whatever it has available. But there's like tens of thousands of ports. How many ports are there on a computer? There's 65,000 ports. Um, I don't know if any, I'm going to guess what ports are restricted on a computer. I'm going to guess there's some ports that are definitely restricted and there's some ports that are in use, right? Here's the idea with ports. Why are there ports at all? Does anyone have any intuition on that? What, what's that? What's the deal with ports? Is it for like is streamlining it? of information, kind of? I wouldn't call it streamlining. Um, I was is just it thinking... for testing. Testing? Did you say? Yeah. Like no, I wouldn't call it called? testing either. I was just thinking because in React, like we had that port three thousand. We did, and yeah. Then I know, and then I know, like <laughs> sometimes I would like open too many different things, and they're like, "Oh, do you want another port?" So yeah. maybe like different places that you can open up. Yeah, that, that's we're getting very close. What's the point of a port in a shipping yard or whatever they call it, a harbor? What's the point of a port? To get stuff off the ship. Yeah, but there's more than one ship. Multiple. How many apps do you think are running on your computer right now that each want to communicate with the internet, with the world? Multiple running apps each want to communicate on the internet to the world. Right now, you're running Zoom. You have a browser open. You have Discord open. That's already three. There's probably like 50, honestly, that are just running updaters and stuff. The computer needs a way to keep track of who's where because information is just coming in and needs to direct it to places. So that's the idea of a port. Uh, your, your app, a designated place where your app can talk to the world. Traditionally, when we're like in a development environment for a server, we just say 3000. I have no idea why you could really, I think you could say anything here and it wouldn't matter. Um, but 3000 is traditional. In fact, it's so traditional that 
applications sometimes when we're developing both want to use 3000 which is annoying because they can't the whole idea is that it's unique for one running process so that's a port anyway i think when you deploy to render it's just going to ignore it and use whatever it has available because everyone on render just like you is going to say 3000 because they're all other developers who have been trained this way So let's break down this, this, uh, this handler, this route handler. This is responding to a get request at slash. Um, it's first argument. First argument is the path. And the second argument is the callback function to fire. And then we have this rec and res. We get rec and res uh, arguments for free. That's provided by Express. But what is that? What is rec and res? Is it requests and response? Yeah. So Express gives us the request and response as objects. And the whole idea with this, with Express is the request comes in and it goes through all these like uh, middleware functions. And it could be a bunch, right? And then finally, how do we end this request? Does anyone know? Request comes in. Our server's listening to the internet. A request comes in. Can I get whatever you have at slash? We'll talk about middlewares later, but then how does the request end? What does the server do? Responds. Yeah. So finally, response. And then that's it. That's over. And then a hundred other clients send a request and you respond. So this is the overall flow of how Express uh, applications function. So here we have access to the request and response objects. And we can console.log them. Let's look at requests first off. Request is gonna be an object. Can anyone think about what some properties might be? What are some likely properties in this request object? An ID. Yeah, oh, possibly, my. but that'll be part of the body. So the That'll be the, the body. What did, what did we provide when we sent a request? So we provided a body sometimes, not always, right? But the biggest thing we provided was, what's this called? Uh, the method. So here I'm console.logging the request object. There's so much stuff that we don't care about. I don't think we're ever going to have to directly deal with this. There's like hundreds of things. Content type is JSON. Yeah, yeah. That's another one. Another good one. Um, so here, if I just uh, Google, or sorry, if I just console.log rec.method and save that and I send this request, I'll just use the browser. So here, look at that. We got get because it's a get request, a client sent to this server. And then we can take a look at response. I don't know if there's anything too useful there. Um, but we'll also send 
Well, I the method. It doesn't really. Oh, I guess that's what we responded to. Um, but we'll send what type of information it is. So I don't know if I can access it here, but maybe dot content type. There we go. Yeah. Do this request again. And uh, well, <laughs> it's a little more. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Two string. This is getting a little silly. But anyway, you, you won't have to manipulate these things directly except when you want to send a response you'll definitely use response.send method to send our json and the beautiful thing is we don't we didn't have to convert this this is an object in in uh, javascript but we didn't have to convert it to json express did that for us so that's pretty cool yeah um normally do we need also do like res.end or something like that. I think like Express takes care of that. No, Express will send. take care of that for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's the most bare bones server we can build, right? But today we're going to build, um, do you guys remember spray and pray? I need to close some of these tabs. Oh, here we go. Um, so yeah, you guys remember Spray and Pray? Uh, tracks how many applications we've applied for, although it's not working right now. I think it's just went into cold storage again. Anyway, what's an example of the uh a response that a, a request that this server will receive and a possible response there we go there's many but what's an example of some because it works user go ahead david post like a new name yeah so it'll be a post to probably slash what P post request to slash what would be a likely endpoint to create a new user user users yeah what's another request that's likely if you that you're going to receive from your client delete yeah, yeah delete request to what endpoint uh so user again slash users. users and then slash what slash the id yeah that exactly that you want exactly to delete. very nice so here's the docs i created them right and we're going to build this the next um what do we have four days three days we'll see how we do uh we're going to build spray and pray together uh so let's work on this first request this get request to slash users how can I get started for right now? Let's just say, let's just for right now, let's just respond with this same message and then we'll, we'll work on that. But how can this, how does this first argument have to change? Um, Monica, here's my goal to respond eventually like this, but right now I just want to respond with this. How can I get started working on this user's get request? Um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Alex, any ideas? How does this first argument have to change to be able to respond to a get request at slash users? Would you need to do this slash users on both sides? Yeah, exactly. So the first argument is you have to tell Express when you want which route you want to handle. So I'm saying I'll handle slash users. And now just with that, how do we send this request to test this? Let me close this. How can I send this request to test this route? There's two ways, but from my browser, how can I do it? Uh, Gyeong? Uh, uh, 
but you can put users there. And what am I going to see in the browser from the server? Uh, you see um, a object uh, include the property success and message. Yeah, and awesome with the technical communication. But now I said that my goal, let me clean this out. Oh, I want to save that for later, possibly. Um, okay, I said my goal is this array of objects. So we're going to use a fake database today. So what you can do is just um, go ahead and copy this. And I provide this to you in the assignment. So this is our fake database, right? This is absolutely not how it's going to work in, in real life, but it, it's helpful for simplifying things for today. Here's what users looks like, an array of objects. How can I now make my response look like this? Success true, is that good? Is that good, Zach? Success true? Um, yes. Yes, but what other property do I need to make the docs are our one source of truth? We need to make it match. Um, users. Users. And fortunately for me here, I actually don't have to type anything else because this is what's happening, right? And now when I send this response, it's going to look identical to what the docs tells me it needs to look like. See that? So now we built a server that's responding like the docs are telling us it needs to respond. So this is going to be the flow for the whole day. Any questions on that first, our, our, real, our first real kind of endpoint? We're just going to keep building these um, endpoints. Yeah, go ahead. During the assignment, we're going to... I mean, this is just an example, right? But during the assignment, we're going to be creating the our own kind of uh, expected response, right? You're this creating a whole case, server. Going, Today, you are creating case, a whole in server. In this case, we're we're using your already existing one to to make it to to get that example that you're showing right now, right? The already but, existing one is literally just for ex an example, but mm -hmm. and if you want to test it and see how it responds but you're building you're entirely building from scratch your own and you're going to rely on the docs to guide you as to how or to, to the, the requirements the specs yeah but there's no front end just the docs pretty much all right let's try to do one more right so it's going to get harder. I want to now have a server that can respond to a post request. So how can I manipulate this to start responding to this user's post request? Um, opens the class because it's getting kind of hard. Would it be the app.post? Yes. Yeah, so we change the method here. What method do you want to respond to? I want to respond to a post request. Is my path good or not good? Good. My path is good, yeah. And now, what info do I need from the user to make a new user? <laughs> name. So I need name. How do I get it? How can I console.log name right here so first off we need to use thunder client to emulate this request because there's a body and it's a post request yeah. so let's do that first off um yeah let's do let's work on that request so how can i do this post request in thunder client what, what has to change here Again, click opens on, the class. Yeah. Click on post. Change the method to post. Yeah, method to post. How does the and path change, Renata? Add users. 
users and where is my body what's going on <laughs> where is my body oh there it, is. it was hiding okay so what has to go in here i guess that json.stringify what's there I, it's a little easier oh, from thunder client we can just oh, okay. rely on them to do it but we have okay. to format it correctly i was sure there was a format button where is that format button Could have swore. Um, Thunder client. Oh, they just did an update. Maybe they got rid of it. Mine shows. Mine says format. I know. Like, and mine always right. did. Um, I don't know why they got rid of it. But whatever. Uh, we are now sending this request to our server and our server, we want to see the name that this client is providing our server, but how can we see this name? Is it request.name? Very close. It's request.body is where express stores this information from the user. Well, the body of the request. But it gets a little bit, the story is not that easy. So if I send this request again, uh, well, you'll see nothing is happening, but we don't see anything in the console.log. The problem is Express doesn't know on its own how to handle JSON. So we need our first middleware to tell Express to expect JSON and convert it for us to an object. And to do that, we do use. So that is basically saying it will respond to get, post, put, delete, any method. And we want to use Express.json, a built-in method to convert, uh, well, to do exactly this. Tell Express to expect JSON and convert it for us. Now, so that's like some homework kind of you have to do in every Express app you build. And now when we send this request again, I'm deleting the old ones. So this one, post request to users with a body. Ooh, now something worked. And look down here, we console.log to the body converted to an object. Right here. So now what we're after is the name, right? We wanted that name. So how do we access the name still from this rec.body? What data type is rec.body? Object. It's an object. So how can we access that property name? Would it be body.name? It, it, it well, request.body.name, right? So here I'm going to say name equals request.body.name. And now if I console.log name, we should see what the user provided us. John. Finally, how can I create a new user? So now I want to, I need to create a new user and add it to our database, quote unquote. Here's our database down here. How do we add a new user? What data type is a user first off? Array. A user is an array, but each user is what data type? Uh, object. An object. So let's start there and make a little object. What properties does it have? Key value. Key values. What are those keys? ID, name, count. 
So count is going to, when it first is created, is always going to be what in this spray and pray application? What makes sense? One. No, not one. When I first create a user, how many, ap how many applications did they apply for? Zero. Zero. So we can do zero here. That's fine. And then name, what value do we want for name? Empty string. Good empty. No, name, we did all that hard work of getting from the user what they provided us. Remember, John, in rec.body? So here we want name, name, but we can shorten that to just name. And then how do we, how can we give an ID? What do we want for an ID? What are these, well, these IDs are crazy, but let's, we're not going to be that crazy, right? Any, how do we get a unique, well, there's a lot of different things we could do, but. For this User app. User length. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what I was trying to get at in a weird way. User uh, dot length, maybe plus one to be safe. Although this is totally fake again, just for the purposes today. That's not how you're going to make an ID. And then finally here, a user sends a request to make a user. They receive a response. They want to see success true. What else do they want to see? What would be the most satisfying for them to see? The new user posted. Yes. So here we change this to user. Now they'll actually see the user we created. But right now we're lying to them. We didn't actually add it to the database, add, our, add the user to the database. How do we do that? How can we add something to an array? You said the push? Yeah. And again, this is just for today. This is off. This is not real code you would use in a database. Users dot push. What am I pushing? User. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so let's see if this works, right? So we're trying to add John to users with this request and we got back. Yeah. Now we're adding Kevin success, true user ID, Kevin. So we're successfully sending post requests to the database here. But remember I said, I want you to, your client will screw up in every way conceivable. So what's some ways they can screw up our client? Uh, Ryan. They forgot to put a name in? Yeah, no name in the body. Maybe no body at all. We're still seeing success true. That's no good. So how can we improve our logic here? How can we make sure there's a name and reject if not? What do you think? Use if statement. If what? User equal to true. User equal to true? Maybe. <laughs> well, on this know. line, we don't even have access maybe, to user yet. If, maybe if name equals no or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but the nice way to do that is if not name. So just bang the name. Because if it's falsy, undefined null, then what kind of response do we want to send the user? We'll put like success false. And then um, maybe the message could be uh, name must be provided. Yep. And here we also want to return because we don't want the rest of this function to fire. <coughs> so let's see if that error checking worked. There we go. 
success false name must be provided to create a user awesome what's another way they can screw up uh rodrigo how else can our clients screw up because they will screw up in every way you can screw up they'd be putting like a blank name uh sure but i think i think that'll be accepted Oh, no, yeah, because it was falsy, a blank string. Yeah. So we, we actually, we're actually good there. Our server successfully responded, telling them they screwed up. How else can they screw up? The endpoint? Yeah. They do uh, create user, right? And now this is awful. We got back HTML, which we never want to do. We want to always send back JSON. So here, um, we're going to be responding to all these different endpoints. If our application reaches, or if Express reaches this point in the code and hasn't responded, we know no route was found. So what we can do is just say, if you got to this point, um, we know you, you uh, didn't find a good route. So this will be your last endpoint. So we send this again and it says no route found. And then there's one more way they can screw up. They're not using the correct uh, method. Like they're using a um, method yeah, instead the of a post. The the method will uh, be no route found, which is adequate. That's fine. The property is not in quotations. Yeah, the, the JSON is screwed up in any way. You can screw up JSON, so just an extra comma or something. And now we're gonna get a nasty error, right? So this is an er error that Express generates, and this one's a little harder to deal with. We in Express we have something called error handling, which will be activated. And to respond to the, those types of errors, we need four parameters in our callback function. And then here, I'm going to access the message property on the generated error. So this is like Express, Express's built-in error handling. Need four uh, parameters to activate. So this is kind of weird, but you, for now, just copy this code and you'll be good until you get more comfortable. So now we send it and this is better. At least we got JSON back, success false, an error that's talking about the JSON. It's not great, but it's pretty good. All right, any questions on that? So um just to just to um, confirm uh, that app dot use uh, we used that at the top once right yeah we did because we want app dot use we want to convert all of the JSON right away we don't care what the request is every request we can convert JSON even if they don't have a body it's not going to hurt to just run it through that converter that middleware. All right, so this is going to be a challenging day because we ran really short on time and we, I, there's still one more thing I need to show you. So today might be a challenge, but we got through, I think, most of what I wanted to get through. Anyway, now this is running locally, but when you submit, you're going to have to submit to me a deployed link. So we're going to use render. We can't use Netlify because this is a server. Um, so you're going to have to sign up for render. I hope I'm signed up already. Oh yeah, here's my actual servers for the course. But we'll create a test one, right? Or what is this called? Um, so here you click on new, then you click on web service. 
And now it's saying connect a repository. So this is why we learned GitHub, right? So how do I make this into a Git tracked project? The lecture that we just built. What are the steps I need to do? Because to deploy this, I'm going to need to push it to GitHub. Git init. Yeah. So first I'm going to do git init. What's some other steps I need to do? Hit add dash a. Before I add, Got there's it. something I want to ignore though. Oh, you the um, git ignore. You want yeah. to ignore the so node. I'm going to create a git ignore file so I can ignore those node modules. And now, Renata, what am I going to do? Uh, git an uh, add. Uh, dot add all of it mm -hmm. and then and then um, commit dash m and then just have a comment maybe first commit very nice and now how do i get it to github just create a remote um repository there new repository delete me um lecture Public, I don't care. Oh, actually, you guys can use this for the code today. So I'll say uh, <coughs> spray and pray lecture. Um, yeah, let's create a repository. Now, how Git and GitHub have no idea about each other's existence. Well, this repo has no idea about, the local repo has no idea about the, the remote one. How do I make that connection, that glue? Take that link there and add it. Yep. And how do I do that? I think it's like Git remote. I can't remember. <laughs> Usually there's like a link there that I copy, like add or something. Oh, and then. Yeah, there it is. So see, so get, get remote add origin, and then you have your link there. Very nice. Yeah. And then finally, I can do what? Push. Origin, where are you going? Which branch do you want to push? Master. And there we go. Now, refresh. We can see that our code is here. That's great. Now back to render and connect a repository. And I'm gonna search for, well, I gotta refresh because it doesn't know about the new one. Spray and pray lecture, connect. Does, doesn't really matter, spray and pray lecture. Um, How did we first build the node project? What did we do? What command did we run to install all those node modules? NPM. Yeah, so here you're gonna have to tell render how, as if you were cloning a project, how you would install it. So NPM I, NPM install. And then how did we start this node project? How did we run this code? NPM init. Now that was to start the node project. Oh, so I node indexed. Very nice. Free, unless you don't want to wait for the cold like I do, and then create web service, and I think we're good. There's a chance that it won't like that we hard-coded the port, but we'll see in a second. So now it's actually like a computer in renders mazes of computer or uh whatever farm of computers is actually cloning from the repo and doing the steps we told it to do on the little computer like we have a little like ai like worker who's doing the same steps it's kind of cool <laughs>